everyone, this is Josh in the background, my beloved. <laughs> so I will be in and out of poses. Josh will be doing the practice the entire time. And of course, Thor, the pup of healing and thunder, and then Captain America, which I'm not sure if you can see him, but they'll be making appearances as we go through. So um, we're actually going to start on our backs. So come in to, and I have to be honest, this is this might be my second time teaching a Facebook Live, which is so odd, as many of my yoga teachers might know, because I'm so used to being with my students and seeing your bodies as we move through. So this is me leaning into the discomfort. So come onto your backs into in the supine position on your mat, just laying down with your palms face up. And if it, yeah, and you can keep your knees bent as well as a modification, allowing for the knees to fall in toward the center. And just take a few moments here to connect with your breath. Ah, breathe in, breathe out. Inhaling in high vibrational energy. All the good stuff, the juicy stuff, all the possibilities, what you want to create and manifest and attract. And then with each exhale that you make, just allow for any limiting beliefs, negative self-talk loops, and just tension that you might be holding in the body that you don't even know about. Inhale long, slow, deep breaths, gentle suspension of the breath at the top of the inhale. We call that kumbak retention breath. And then on your exhale, just ah, open mouth exhales are highly, highly welcome here. And again, inhale, long, slow, and deep, suspending that breath at the top of the inhale for about two, three, maybe four seconds. Exhale, open mouth, just let it go. And with each exhale that you make, allowing for the back side of your body to connect with your mat, to connect with the floor, to connect to the earth, and feeling the support of Mother Earth, Gaia. Just feeling the support, letting go any worries or concerns. With each inhale, drawing in creation, manifestation, and all the good stuff that's happening in your life right now. And with each exhale, again, just let go anything that doesn't serve you anymore. And inviting you at this time to set an intention for your practice today. So what brought you onto your mat this time? Could be something very specific. Could be about healing, relationship, health, business, prosperity. Could be something very general, overall. It could just be overall, highest and best kind of stuff. And then imagine literally visualizing yourself handing over your intention to your higher self, right? That, that part of you that is all knowing, all loving and non-judging. Hmm. And then drawing the knees into the chest and everybody knows who has pets at this time that as soon as you lay down on your back, it invites your pets in. So knees to the chest and gently rocking from side to side. And allowing for your knees to fall over to the right side, high four, and open the arms up with your palms face up, allowing for the back sides of your shoulders to connect to the earth. And allow for your feet and your toes to relax. <sighs> Deep belly breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Relaxing your fingers face, your teeth, and your tongue. <laughs> and then gently unwinding, bringing knees back to center. Going to that bum twist again. Gentle squeeze, knees in, and then shifting your knees to the other side. And noticing, oh, I just got a little chiropractic adjustment there. Allowing for that opposite arm with the palm face up, creating that external rotation at the shoulder, relaxing the feet, and playing with your range of motion at your hips, 
So you may want to pull the knees in a little closer to the belly or allow for the knees to move farther away. Whatever, whatever feels better for you, just give yourself that permission to explore throughout the practice. Big belly breath in, big belly breath out. And then slowly untwisting, come on back to center again. Ah, extend left leg all the way down to the floor and draw the right knee in. So extending and lengthening through that left leg. I want you to actively press through the left heel as you gently pull the right knee into the chest. Keep the head down. Take a big belly breath in and on your exhale, Imagine the back side of your, your left thigh pressing in and you're drawing the right knee in closer. Activate the feet, spread the toes, bring energy down to the feet. And then lift this left leg up. So let the heel come up about 45 degrees. Activate both feet, take a big inhale. And on your exhale, if it serves your neck, lift your head, neck and shoulders off of the mat as if you were trying to touch your knee to your nose, nose to knee, hold here, pressing lower back into the floor, maybe lift that left leg up a little higher and then let everything back down again. Nicely done. Extending, switch legs, right leg goes long, left knee in, left heel drops all the way down to the floor. So actively pressing right heel down that other leg, the other right leg, <laughs> and draw the left knee in. So as if someone were gently tractioning you through the right leg at that extended ankle and gently pulling out as you're pulling this left knee in. Inhale again, exhale again, draw that left knee in and stretch out, actively stretching that right leg out. One more breath, inhale, exhale, lift head, neck and shoulders if it serves your neck. Lift this right leg a little higher, pressing lower back into the mat. One more breath and lower back down. Nicely done. Knees into chest. Arms down by your side. You can go side down or to out into a T position and let both legs go straight up to the, to the uh, ceiling, to the sky. Get active on the feet as if you're wearing a high heel. Press through the balls of the feet and spread the toes. Energetically drawing down through the legs, pressing the sacrum below the lower back into the mat and then lower the right leg down only halfway, lift back up again, and then lower the left leg down. Now, if you notice your lower back coming off of the floor, that means your core is not activated. So alternate right leg, and left leg. Keep going. Keep going. So here, and I'll, you'll hear me say this a lot, in, in yoga we call it root lock or mulvan in Sanskrit, and it, you may also notice, notice kegels. So the kegels, that's that contracting, keep going, keep going, exhaling on the lower, inhale on the lift, exhale on the lower, inhale on the lift. Gently squeezing those deep pelvic floor muscles. Good, one more time each side, and then draw both knees into the chest again. Nice big hug, showing up, doing your yoga practice. And then roll to the left and gently come up to all fours or tabletop on your mat. So hands and knees. <laughs> Gotta love puppies, they love to play. Hands and knees on the mat, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and then begin a few cat cows here. Dropping belly, open heart, open throat. Press hands into the mat, scoop the tailbone under, draw your chin to your chest. Inhale, drop that belly, open heart, open throat. Exhale, press in, lift up, scoop that tailbone under, chin to chest. And a few more times at your own pace. Inhale, drop that belly, open heart, open throat. Make sure you look forward. Exhale, round through. So you're really trying to stretch out and lengthen through the spine from tailbone 
all the way up to the crown, last one, and then settle in neutral spine. So halfway between that rounding and that flexing, that extension and that flexing, and then extend slowly. Watch out and make sure your, your pup or your cat is not right behind you and extend the right leg toward the back of your mat keeping that parallel to the floor. Spread those toes, nice active foot, and make sure your fingers are spread as well. So uh, ideally you're pressing hands into the floor, lifting up from the navel point and keeping a long spine. And then bend the knee, draw in and pull in. So as if you were trying to touch your knee to your nose or your forehead, extend long through the legs, spread the toes, pull in and up and extend. Now if you want to make this more challenging, we're going to add the opposite arm to the mix. So it looks like this. So you can add any time or subtract. At any time you can go back to just the modification of just the leg. Just be mindful that as the leg extends to the back, you spread those toes each time. One more time, pull in and up and out and then straighten. Arm, leg, nice and long, palm faces in, thumb side. Now that's an extra challenge. You don't have to do the extra challenges that I give. And then come back to center, spread your knees and sit back onto the heels, bend the elbows and stack forearm next to forearm and let your forehead come to the mat. Ah, open mouth, exhale, inhale and exhale, and then whenever you're ready, we're going to come back up again to tabletop hands and knees. How you doing guys? How are you? <laughs> All right, left leg. Let's do the other side. We don't want you to be lopsided. Straighten it out. Spread those toes. Lift up through that navel point. Pull the knee in and up. So really round through that mid back, upper back as if you're trying to touch your knee to your forehead. Spread the toes on the extension of the back leg. Pull in and up. Extend and spread those toes. Good. A few more. So if you're up for the challenge, want to add some balance to the mix, in, inhale, spread fingers and toes, exhale, touch. Just keep breathing. That's all that matters, especially if you're new to the practice. If you need to take breaks at any time and sit back into child's pose, please feel free. Good. <laughs> All right, guys, one more time. Good. Hold, hold, hold. Straight out to the side if you're up for it. Hold there. Four, three, two, one. And knees go wide. Forearms come together and forehead to the mat. Big inhale. And big exhale. Nice work. Come on up. Back up to tabletop. Hands and knees. Curl your toes under. Pause here for a moment. Make sure the knees are right underneath your hips. Walk your hands forward just about an inch or two, just a little bit, preparing for downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Curl the toes up. So watch. I want to go slow here. A lot of times, downward dog is a tough one. We're not going to hang here for very long, but we will use it for, for a transition pose to kind of get from poses to poses. Lift the hips up, straight up, and then press the hands away from the front of the mat. Spread your fingers and energetically allow for your heels to come down toward the floor. So notice how, so in order for Josh to go long here in the spine, he has to bend his knees a little bit. So notice that if you've got really tight hamstrings, this entire 
super, we call this, in, in, if anyone's, any of my anatomy geeks are out there, this is the entire superficial back line of the body. So when this is tight, because we do so much of this kind of posture, right, this gets overstretched. So in order to get him to go nice and long here, we need to bend these knees. Yeah, I already told you we weren't going to hang here for too long, didn't I? Okay, next inhalation, inhale your right leg to the sky, and then step that foot all the way through to the inside of your right thumb. Now, if you're not doing down dog, just come into the pose just like this. We call this low lunge. Front knee is over ankle. Now, if you have your blocks, you may want to do this. This is a nice modification. It gives you a little height. Now, actively press back through your left heel. Pause here for a moment. Breathe in, breathe out. And then allow for the right arm to reach up to the sky as you open your chest. So you wanna dial open, stacking shoulder over shoulder. You can modify this pose by dropping the back knee all the way down to the floor. Hold here. Reach that arm up a little higher. See if you can open up the space between the sternum and the shoulder. One more breath. And then release the arm back down. Hold here. And then bring both hands up to that front thigh. So ideally this back thigh is on a diagonal. If not, slide this knee back a little bit more and shift that weight into your left hip. So this is a really good stretch. Pose, asana, if you have lower back issues. So the hip flexors, again, for my anatomy geeks out there, hip flexors, you have them on either side. They attach to the thigh bone, the femur bone, cross over the pelvis, and then they insert to each individual vertebra in the lumbar spine. And for some people, it actually attaches to the lower rib. So if we do a lot of sitting, this muscle gets tight. Hands back to blocks or all the way to the floor. Pause here. Curl toes under back leg, lift that back knee up, and then step forward. So step that foot forward. If you have blocks, I want your blocks right in front of you, about four or six inches in front. And then slowly reach the arms out to the side, all the way up overhead. And exhale, hands down, your heart center. Spread the feet about hip distance wide. Lift and spread only your toes. So a lot of times if you have not done a lot of yoga work with your feet, you might lift the balls of the feet off as well. So look down at your feet and lift and spread all 10 toes. And if they're not doing what you're telling them, that's okay. That's because you have not created a neuromuscular pathway from your brain to innervate the neurons that attach to those muscles yet. Practice, practice, practice. Good, so lift and spread those toes. Nicely done. All right, you can release them back down. Turn your palms forward and make sure your knees have a slight bend to them. Next inhalation, raise those arms all the way up to the sky and exhale, hands back to heart. Pressing your big toe only into the mat. Let the other toes be free. Inhale, arms out to side, stretch out, spread the fingers, let the palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart. And again, inhale, spread those arms, open the chest, lift up, look up. Exhale into squat, bend the knees and drop the hips. So notice if you're leaning forward, open the chest, slide the shoulder blades down the back body and let the fingertips touch. Bring your thumbs to the doorway of your heart. Breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> Sinking a little deeper. Be mindful to sit back onto the heels as you lift and spread your toes. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, bow. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see. I don't do swan dives in my practice. Bend the knees, drop the hips, let your belly touch your thighs, and then let your hands go all the way to the floor. Now, if you're not super flexible and you have blocks, it's gonna look like this. If you can touch the floor, then it looks like this. Let it go. Inhale, half lift. Lift the chest and look forward. 
Exhale, step back into your downward facing dog. Upside down B on the mat. Good. Spread your fingers. Maybe even widen your hand stance on the mat. Your next inhalation, lift your left leg high to the sky, left leg high. And then step that left foot all the way to the front of your mat. Nicely done. So again, blocks or no blocks, hands are on either side of the front foot. Make sure the knee is over the ankle directly. Actively pressing back through this right heel. Good, you don't have to touch the floor though with that foot, you're on the balls of the back foot there. Nice long spine. Prepare for twist, you wanna inhale, and then on your exhale, lift that left arm up to the sky and unravel the arm. Beautiful, breathe in, breathe out. Nice, inhale again, exhale and twist perhaps a little deeper. One more breath, inhale, exhale and twist. Nicely done. Good, release that left arm to the ground. Drop the back knee all the way down, relax the back foot and pause here for a moment. So again, if, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but we're basically stretching out the hip flexors on the left side. Now remember, the hip flexors insert and attach right into the lumbar spine. So as you are releasing, letting go and opening up, you may feel a little energetic release happening in that lower back area. Good, bring both hands up to that left thigh. Come on up. Bring awareness to both feet. So remember, you always want to be aware of your foundation of the pose, which is the front foot and the back foot, as well as a gentle connection to your deep core via that deep core line, your Kegels, as we say. Breathe in, breathe out. Good, release both hands to the floor once more or to your blocks. Step the back foot forward. Tuck and unravel, so more advanced, unravel using the core, unfurl the arms all the way up to the sky, maybe a little back bend or big back bend, and then exhale your hands to your heart's center. <sighs> Bring awareness to your feet, find your grounding, find your center. Pressing down energetically, imagining roots coming out through the base of your feet, down through the floorboards, through the foundation of the building, all the way down to the core of the earth. And as if you're attempting to spread your yoga mat apart with your feet, keeping that slight bend on the knees as you lift and spread the toes. Bring your hands to your hips. Shift your weight ever so lightly into the left leg, and we're going to move into a little balance here. Bring your big toe right foot to the mat and notice if you shifted all your weight over here, bring yourself back to center. Gentle squeeze, imagine this inner flame behind your navel point lifting up and out and then lift that right knee up. Play with balance. Now, if you're having trouble with balance or you have balance issues for whatever reason, feel free to grab a chair and bring it next to you or, or put your finger on a wall. Just remember that if you're not truly doing the balance, you're not gonna get any better at it. So if you're always holding on to something, you're only working on the strengthening aspect, not the balancing piece. Good, and then shift the leg back. So I'm gonna turn sideways. So modification would look like this on a half, a little bit of a diagonal. Ideally, we wanna work on dropping the chest to parallel and so that your head is in line with that back foot. I do encourage a slightly bent support knee Wiggling is good. Now, once you get the foundation of the pose, you can add your arms to the posture. You can go out to the side, toward the back, that's a little easier. And then the most challenging is to allow for both arms to reach toward the front of the room. <laughs> and see, if you fall out, this is, you just play with it. You go in and you go out and you come back up and then step that right foot forward back to the front of the mat, reset, open chest, roll the shoulders back and down and reach those fingertips down toward the floor. Energetically imagining a magnet at the top of your crown chakra and reaching up toward a plate of metal. 
in the ceiling. Lift and spread the toes. Again, knees are softly bent, a slight bend to the knees. Breathe in, breathe out. Hands back to hips, shift weight ever so gently to the right side, and then lift the left knee up. Again, gentle connection to your deep core, squeezing those pelvic floor muscles. Notice if you're leaning back in the posture as you're balancing. Shoulders roll back and down, and you want a nice straight line from pelvis to rib cage to neck and head. Preparing for airplane, Dakasana. Slowly allow for the leg to extend toward the back of your mat. Just play with it. There is no right, wrong, good, bad here. This is about you and yourself and your ego and your process and your letting go and your surrender on the mat with you. That's it. So just letting go of your attachment to what you should be. Yeah, and you can play around. If you bend the knee a lot or you straighten it out a little bit more, that's more challenging. Again, most challenging, arms toward the front of the room, palms face in. We call that warrior three. Lift that back leg a little higher. One more breath. And then step that foot forward <laughs> or fall forward <laughs> and come back up to mountain pose. Reset. Mountain pose is not a resting posture. It is a very active posture, activating all four points of the pose. Two feet, two hands, two arms, and your head. So you want to energize, extend out through the arms, through the legs, and through the crown of the head. <sighs> Inhale, arms out to the side. Exhale, hands to brow. Bend the knees, drop the hips. We're going to bow forward, going down into squat, Utkatasana. Hands to floor or blocks, and then straighten out the legs to the best that you can. Let the head go completely and look all the way to the back of the room. You can take a rag doll here by grabbing your forearms at this time, if you like. You can either half circle around, or you can walk your hands to one side and then walk your hands to the other side. <sighs> it looks like dinner time here. You guys can see Captain has brought some of his dinner onto my yoga mat. As you inhale to your flat back, so again, I do things differently in my body matrix, uh, registered trademark style yoga. Exhale, fold forward, let the head go completely. Inhale, bend the knees, drop the hips, lift the head, look forward. Exhale, step back, all the way back, downward facing dog, rise up onto the balls of the feet, and then roll forward through the spine as you find plank high push-up. Now, if this is absolutely too challenging for you, drop your knees immediately. If not, hang out here for a few breaths. Lift the right leg off of the mat, spread those toes, hold, 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 and switch legs. Left leg lift, hold, 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 release, hold here. We're gonna do five, I'm gonna go easy on you guys, five, Yogi push-ups. If you do have rotator cuff or shoulder issues, just take a child's pose right now. Come forward a little bit, and then slowly lower only halfway and lift up. If you're new to push-ups, I'm gonna encourage that you take your block and place it underneath your chest so that you don't touch the block. You know you're not going too far. After the fifth repetition, child's pose. Water break. <sighs> Sit back onto your heels. Spread those arms. Drop the forehead. Allowing for your third eye to connect to the mat. Just taking a moment here to tap in to your own inner wisdom. Inner trusting. Inner knowing. Inner grounding. Into me I see. So for those of you who know about chakras or energy centers, I am a Reiki master teacher as well and a chakra therapist. And basically we have seven major chakras that run through the Shishuna, the central axis channel. And each chakra represents a different aspect of us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So just take a moment here. A sip of water would be good.
then whenever you're ready, make your way back to your downward facing dog. If you have wrist issues, dolphin is an other option. So dolphin looks like this, where you come to your forearms, but your hips still stay up. So the back legs are straight. You wanna actively press back through the back heels and your elbows are under your shoulders. Inhale, right leg high. Step through, all the way to the front of the mat. Yeah, it may take you a while. Maybe your foot came up halfway, that's okay. Just kind of drag it up, walk it forward. We will wait for you. <laughs> Good, now from here, we're gonna go up, arms up. And we call this crescent lunge. Now, if this is too much balance for you, you can let that back foot spin open if needed. Now the arms are just jewelry. So encouraging in this position to keep everything open, I would recommend that you bend the elbows a little bit so that you can create some space here and really begin to make a stretch here at the, in the deep um, arm lines there. Breathe in, breathe out. One more breath here. And then circling the left arm forward, bring your right hand to your right hip, reach forward, up, and as you open, spin the back foot open and down. Extend the right arm to the front. Turn your palms sideways. So thumbs are to sky. You can bring first finger and thumb together into Gyan Mudra if you like. Make sure the front knee is bent and the back leg is completely straight. Actively press into the outside edge of your back foot. Bend into that front knee. Captain says, everybody's doing great. Turn your front palm face up. Inhale, and on your exhale, reverse your warrior. Make sure this front knee didn't roll in. Press your inner knee to your outer knee. Make sure that this front knee is tracking in line with those front toes. Breathe in, breathe out. And then allowing for your front forearm to come to your thigh. Circle the left arm forward, up, and all the way to the back. Let the fingers come down all the way to the mat here. Reach it forward, reach it up, and reach it back. So noticing the gaze is at that front hand, so you're watching that front hand as it circles all the way around. The shoulder drops down, the fingertips touch the mat if possible. Good, one more circle. And then hold here as the arm approaches the sky. Nice, inhale and exhale. So stacking shoulder over shoulder, Arms go straight up, spread those fingers. And if you want to deepen the pose here, you can bring that hand all the way down to the block or to the floor. So that's an, a more challenging op, um, option for this pose. One more breath here. Make sure your toes are happy little toes and the toes are lifting and spreading. One more breath. And then lift yourself back up again into warrior two. Inhale and on your exhale, pretend little cartwheel. Step that front foot back into downward facing dog. Come forward, more advanced is to roll through the spine. High push up, lift the head, look forward to low push up. Now if you're super strong, you can lower all the way down without dropping the knees. But if not, Drop those knees, take it down, no worries. Come into baby cobra. And then exhale back to child's pose. <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. Perhaps a sip of water. Mindfully make your way back to your downward facing dog. Upside down, B on the mat. Again, modification on the forearms if you need. Inhale, left leg high to sky. 
and then mindfully step it all the way through to the inside staying on the balls of your back foot and then slowly raise your arms up overhead palms face in open chest open heart open throat actively pressing back through the right heel remember modification if you've got really tight neck upper back bend those elbows allowing for the chest to open and expand a little bit more one more breath Take the right arm to the back, circle it forward, reach up and let the back foot spin open. So the back foot goes to almost parallel to the back of the mat there. You can go slightly bent on the arms, you can straighten out, but either way, palms are either face up or they're sideways. So just checking in, front leg, press, pressing inner knee to outer knee, make sure that front foot is facing directly toward the front of the room. Inhale, straighten out the arms, and on your exhale, reverse your warrior. Reverse your warrior. Exalted warrior. Good. Now lift and spread all ten toes. Just the toes. Keep the balls of the feet connected to the mat. Opening up and breathing in to the front side. Left rib cage. Maybe feeling a little stretch in those intercostal muscles. And then allow for that front forearm to come down to that front thigh. Circling around, right arm drops down, fingertips just lightly connecting to front up. And remember, your hand is your drishti. Your hand is your focus. Reaching up, reaching back, reaching all the way around, creating that traction coming up and out of the shoulder. Ah, one more circle. And then allowing for that top arm to reach up high, stretch up, and open, spin open the chest a little bit more if possible. Remember, if you want to make it more challenging, feel free. Block or no block. Take it down to the floor. Find your feet. Find your toes. One more breath. And then lift yourself back up again into warrior two. Cartwheel the hands. Step back to downward facing dog. Rise up onto the balls of the feet. Roll through the spine. High push up to low. Remember you have an option to drop to your knees here in modification. Baby cobra or full cobra. Curl toes. Lift up from your navel point. Shift the weight back, spread those fingers, bend your knees a lot, look forward, step, walk, or jump your feet to the front of the mat. Good. Bend your knees, drop your hips, so stay low, and then lift up into squat. Deep squat. Utkatasana. Chair pose. Open the chest. Slide shoulder blades down the back. Zip up the feet, or you have another option. If you do have a block, you can take your block and place it between your knees, keeping your feet hip distance wide. Okay, so either or. Either way, your knees need to be squeezing something. Ah, oh, sink back a little deeper. Open that throat. Lift and spread the toes. Oh, prepare for twist to the right side. Inhale big, exhale twist. Left elbow, outside, right knee. Good, bend those knees, drop those hips, zip up those feet. So I want you to imagine there's a zipper coming up from your big toes all the way up, inner legs, inner knees, inner thighs, all the way up to the inner groins. Drop the left hand to the floor or block. Remember, use that block, your block is your friend. And Slowly release, untwist. Fold forward, full, fold forward, let it go. Perhaps grab your elbows coming into ragdoll. Separate the feet wider. Open your mouth and shake out your face. So a little, ah, really you know, releasing any tension. Captain America likes that. From your jaw 
your teeth, your face, your tongue. We hold a lot of tension in our face. <sighs> All right. Yeah. Good job, everybody. Hmm. Bend the knees, drop the hips. Preparing to twist on the other side. So again, zipping up. Block is probably still there, or probably not if you um, widen the feet on the last pose. Block back in between the knees. Take it on up to chair pose. Inhale up, big back bend. Exhale and twist to your left. Right elbow, outside, left knee. Bend those knees, drop those hips, lift that head. So ideally, you want to be in a nice diagonal line from head to heart to pelvis. Release the right hand to the floor or to your block. Reach that left arm to the sky. Inhaling from root all the way up to crown. Exhale gently, deepening the twist. Good. Release left hand to floor. Fold forward. Spread those feet wide. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back to your downward facing dog. Rise up onto the balls of your feet. Roll through the spine. High push up. You want to squeeze those glutes and slowly lower down. Keep the elbows tight to the ribs. Remember, drop to your knees in modification with shoulder issues or if you're just not strong enough to sustain that posture. Baby cobra or full cobra. So maybe again, elbows, full cobra all the way up, shoulders away from the ears. So notice creating the space here and opening through here. Good. And then exhale back to your downward facing dog, upside down V on your mat. Drop to your knees, child's pose or puppy stretch. Hi, Kat. What do you want to say to everybody? Oh, good boy, Cappy. Cappy says, downward facing dog, everybody. Thor, what do you have to say? Upward facing dog? Okay. <laughs> Sip of water? <laughs> good. So, we're going to take it down on to our belly. Face down supine position and we're going to do some strengthening for the superficial back line so this part of the body is usually good boy is usually overstretched and locked long and not typically very strong so bringing the hands out to the side pretty much in line with your armpits Roll the shoulders back and down, and then lift up one leg, stretch it out, spread those toes, and lift the other leg up, and just see what that feels like. So if you lift your hands up, you should not be having any tension there. All the work is happening in the erector spinae, the back muscles. And then lower the feet down. This is your inhale. On your exhale, lifting again just the chest, and both legs, if you're up for it, now modification is only one leg. One leg at a time. Lower, inhale, exhale, lift, other leg. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift, alternating legs, or both legs at the same time. Just be sure that when you lift those legs, you traction them and stretch them out and you spread those toes. Good, two more. Great exercise to do every day. Strengthening lower back, glutes and hamstrings as well. Good, one more time. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift, hold here. And then little flutter kicks if you're up for it. Again, if it's too much, if you're if your back is really feeling like it's burning because you're working hard and producing a lot of lactic acid, then just rest. Good. And then release. Let everything go. Arms in front. Turn your head to one side. <sighs> or face down. Whatever feels good. 
and just rest here. Let the glutes go. Relaxing everything. Hmm. And we're going to go for a little bow pose. So think of bow and arrow. Bow pose, bend the knees. Now, if you're able to grab your feet, this pose is for you. <laughs> if you're not able to grab, if you have a yoga strap, you could use that. If not, you're just going to go straight back with the legs and the arms like this, okay? Everybody else, grab a hold of your feet, front of the foot below the toes, and then hug the legs in. I want you to imagine you have a yoga block between your thighs. Spread the toes, inhale big, and on your exhale, press your feet into your hands and lift your chest. Press the heels up toward the sky and pull the legs in energetically. Breathe deep into your lower belly. One more breath and melting, melting, melting. Let everything go. Ah, let the legs come down. And then windshield wiper legs. So bend the knees and let both legs go all the way to the left. Let that right hip come off and both legs go all the way to the right. And I always forget that I'm supposed to do mirror image because I think everything looks opposite to you guys. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Just go whichever way you're going. <sighs> One more time, each side. Awesome blossom. Come on back to center. Let the legs go all the way down. Press up and back. Come into puppy stretch. We had to put a little puppy stretch in here which is like a combination between down dog and child's pose. So you can extend the arms onto the forearms and the hips stay up. So the hips stay up over the knees and just kind of stretch out that way. And then come on up. And we're gonna roll over onto our backs. Time flies when you're having fun. I could go on for another hour, but I assume that you guys have other things perhaps to do tonight aside from yoga 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 and then bring your knees to your chest you know wrap your arms around your legs give yourself a big hug <sighs> and then prepare for bridge pose hi Cappy. hello Cappy. yep so if you if you have <laughs> if you have um a block a yoga block for bridge, I'm gonna encourage that you take your block and place it between your knees. Four inch blocks are better. The, the three inch blocks are just a little bit thinner, but I like it. If you're gonna buy some blocks, just, just so you can keep up with me in yoga, make sure you get a four inch block. All right, going down. So make sure your ankles are under your knees. Arms are down by your side, but I want you to have your palms face up and let them come away from your body a little bit. Make sure your heels are right under those knees. And then slowly lift up, a gentle squeeze at the glutes. Hi, Thor. Hi, Papa. Hi, baby. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. And then lower back down again. We're going to do some active bridging. Inhale, lower. Exhale. Now I want you to press into the balls of your feet. Pause at the top. And then lower back down again on your inhale. Exhale, lift and squeeze. So again, palms are up, shoulders are, oh, you want to create that external rotation at the shoulders. And then lower back down again one more time. Lift up, pause and hold. If you want a little extra strength here, see what it feels like to lift your left leg off of the floor. Pause, hold, hold, hold. Hold up there, hold, and then switch to the other leg. The other leg lifts up, squeezing the block or not. Again, if you don't have a block, you don't have a block. It's okay. Breathe, breathe, holding, and then let that foot come back down. Slowly and mindfully reconnecting the backside of your body to the earth. If you have a block between your knees, release it and just let it go. So again, a block, if you are planning on starting a yoga, an active yoga practice, absolutely 
you need to get invest in a four inch yoga block. You can get them anywhere, obviously all over the internet, anywhere. And two of them is better, especially if you're very, if you're very inflexible, two would be good. Four inches, not the three inch one. Good, now if you do have a block, we're gonna lift the hips, draw the, the uh, block underneath the sacrum, and then allow for both legs to go up to the sky. <laughs> Hi Thor, Hi buddy. I love you too, buddy. So if you do not have a block here, then basically you're gonna be on the floor, which is fine without the block, with the legs up to the sky. Now ideally we want, we want ankle over knee, over hip, but if you have really tight hamstrings and your legs are shaking here, just allow for the legs to come a little closer to your belly. If you have a, um, a robe, if you, you may not have a yoga strap, but, but a, um, a tie from your robe works really well. You could take that for the next class and place it around the bottom of the foot and then hold on to the strap down here. And that will help to support your legs if your hamstrings are screaming at you right now. So this is a, this is a modified inversion. This is a really good exercise to help you to shift from the fight or flight to the parasympathetic nervous system. It's also a great posture to do before you go to sleep if you have trouble sleeping, if you deal with insomnia at all. <sighs> One more breath. And then bend the knees, let the feet come back down. If you have a block under your hips, lift your hips and remove the block. And then cross your right ankle over your left knee. Right ankle over the left knee. This is another one of my favorites, one of my musts. If you're doing a few favorite poses every day, this is one of them to do. Bring both hands behind the left thigh and lift the legs up. So again, both hands interlace behind the left leg. If you cannot do this, sometimes people are just super tight, they don't have the flexibility to get in here, then again, a strap, a, 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 the tie from your robe works really well to help you get up here. So we are stretching out the piriformis on the right hip. So the piriformis is one of the six external rotators of the hips. The piriformis has a relationship with your sciatic nerve. If you've ever had sciatica or piriformis syndrome, so we're opening up the space here. Breathe in, breathe out. Make sure the toes are active. The feet are always active. Spread those toes, take an inhale, back off a tiny bit, and on your exhale, see if you can hug those legs in a little bit closer. And you should feel, if you start to feel a little burning, that's actually good. That means that the fascial adhesions, those tight fascial adhesions, are starting to unravel. Good, now uncross the leg, release, and bring both feet. Whoa, make sure there's no dog behind you. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, here we go. Thorzy, all right, buddy. Good, take a moment and notice any energy, any release in that area. When our muscles are super tight and then we stretch them, that's blocked energy. Anywhere you look at it, right? It's not woo woo, it's real. So tension creates blocked energy. That's the basis of all, you know, acupuncture and various different, you know, traditional Chinese medicine as well as Ayurvedic medicine. All right, let's do the other side. Prepare, left leg across right knee. Both hands behind, lift up, and again, activate those feet and spread those toes. Inhale, and on your exhale, see if you can bring the legs a little closer. You could even lift the head and chest if it feels good for you, as long as you don't have any neck issues. And once again, the sensation is happening. So the piriformis attaches to your sacrum, crosses over the butt, and inserts onto the greater trochanter, that knobby knob that for some of us, you may feel it. It may feel a little sensitive. There's a lot of muscles that attach to that place. Good. Inhale again, back off. Exhale, draw those legs a little closer. Be mindful to activate those feet. Good, and then release, uncross, 
Separate your feet wider than your mat. See my feet a little bit wider than the mat. Everyone's gonna be different depending on the length of your legs, but you want the inner knees to kiss. You want your, the top of your inner thighs, maybe your entire inner thighs are zipping up. But notice the outside edge of your feet should not be touching. Now, relax tension in the neck and the shoulders. Again, you can go T position with the arms. You can go down by your side. Just be mindful that this part is open. You can go T position. Comfortable on the head. Make sure it's a natural extension of the cervical spine. And just let everything be supported. Let everything fall in, creating that internal rotation of your thighs, which actually creates space between your sacrum and your SI joints. Who would have known you that you're going to get an anatomy lesson in your yoga class, right? Big breath in. Big breath out. And then feel free to stay here if this feels really yummy. If not, we're going to finish up final pose of the evening in Shavasana. <laughs> and you may want to grab your, your pets, one of them, if they're not too big, and allow for them to come onto your belly. They're very good healers. And just close your eyes, get comfortable. If you have two blocks, you can place your blocks underneath your knees. To give your back a little bit of a, of a reset there. Again, let the palms face up. Noticing if you're holding on to any tension still in the body. And maybe just create a little bit of tension throughout the entire progressive relaxation. Tighten everything up. Tighten up your feet your calves, your thighs, your buttocks, your abdomen, your chest, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, everything tight, 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 and then let everything go. And if that feels good, do it again. So my pups are trained healing Reiki dogs. So Captain America is actually giving me Reiki right now. Some of my Peeps are on live today. They've experienced Thor and Captain America and Monty firsthand in healing. But if you don't have a pup or a dog or a cat, you can just invite in your spiritual team for, and ask for a perfect healing for today of mind, body, and soul, past, present, and future. And just imagining that all of your systems, organs, and glands, everything working together in perfect balance. Everything is communicating perfectly. Any blocks have been unblocked. And then imagine this golden white light pouring into the crown of your head. Golden white light coming directly from source higher self, higher power, just swirling through your entire body, connecting into every cell, fiber, nerve ending of your being. I am light. I am peaceful. I am love.
and then gently bringing your awareness back to your breath. Noticing perhaps any messages coming through from your higher self, something to pay attention to. And then gently and lovingly begin to bring movement back into your physical body, wiggling your fingers and your toes. And twirling your wrists and your ankles. And then drawing your knees back into your chest. Give yourself one last hug, especially for showing up, putting yourself at the top of the list. And rolling over onto your left side, gently pressing yourself up into a comfortably seated place on your magic carpet. Keeping your eyes closed, drawing the palms together into Anjali Mudra, bringing balance to both right and left hemispheres of the brain. Dropping your head to your hands, acknowledging your own amazing light within as we bow to each other, acknowledging each other's light, divinity, and awesomeness. Namaste. Jabaguan, Satnam. The light within me bows, acknowledges to the light within you. Thank you for joining me.